Certainly, I'm very happy to be here with you, and I really enjoyed uh, the, the previous session. It was uh, explicitly focused on the rights to housing, and uh, it offered us extremely valuable, in my mind, the contributions on the dilemmas and the, uh, the processes and the uh, hopes that characterize urban movements, specifically uh, focused uh, on, on the right to housing. So what I would uh, attempt to do is not uh, just uh, perhaps briefly say what are the problems or the prospects of, of these movements, but perhaps try to draw some uh, attention on the on one side, the theoretical implications of this whole area of crisis in housing, and on the second part, let's say, I would try to focus on the political uh, problems and the possibilities and, and opportunities that rise because of the housing movements. Well, as we perhaps all agree, all the all those uh, uh, experiences that uh, uh, people shared with us about the housing movement possibly hint uh, towards a very important, uh, let's say, conclusion. Not only in this period, but especially in this period, private ownership of housing is a trap. This trap was proven not only in the theoretical level, but through specific data coming from countries in crisis. People were uh, allowed to believe that they could earn a living and also support their own independent and uh, privately owned house. And they were promised that they could afford this kind of housing and then had to deal, had to, had to, to live with a situation in which they are not free either to use this house or to conduct their life the way they have uh, dreamed about it. So, private ownership perhaps was substantially a trap if we're talking about the condition of, uh, of capitalism, but it becomes and it is proven to be a trap also in a period of crisis in which people were uh, forced to lose their houses on which they based their, let's say, future and their life um, and their understanding of life. Uh, what makes this, this uh, procedure uh, very important in, our, in the period of crisis? First of all, uh, whereas housing has been a kind of motor, a kind of locomotive in the economy of the south, at least, of Europe, Whereas housing has been an opportunity for uh, capital to earn a lot of money through this procedure of uh, uh, supporting private ownership, now this engine, this locomotive, seems to be blocked. And who suffers from this blocking? Who suffers from this stopping of the engine? Those who are lured to, uh, to enter the, 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 the train uh, behind the locomotive believing that they were participating in a period of affluence, in a period of uh, promises and expectations. And I believe that in order to try to reverse the situation, we have to reconsider the conditions under which housing has been not only effectively uh, transformed to a merchandise, to a commodity, but also, and I noticed somebody I don't remember now has said that very specifically, to reverse the imaginary of private ownership, which is, let's say, the ideological part of the trap that where we are now found. To reverse the imaginary of private ownership as a solution to housing, we need to rethink, and all, all the movements have talked about it, about the right to the city and the right to housing. There has been a lot of talk about this, this, this term. And a lot of it is far away from any kind of politically understanding the condition of, of uh, uh, today's urban struggles. The right to housing is not simply a right. It's not something which is guaranteed by the UN Charter of uh, Individual Rights. 
It is this, but it is far more than this. And it is far more than this because it has to do with rights connected to it. It has to do with the right to, to be able to use the city in various levels, on various levels. To be able to have access to the city, but also to be able to have access to a, mini, a meaningful uh, form of life. So the right to housing is not simply something which can end up being a kind of uh, um, uh, quantity to be measured. Therefore, it's not enough to talk about adequate housing. And it's not simply a kind of uh, commodity to be sold. So it's not enough to talk about affordable housing. Interestingly, there is a, a strong movement to connect the right to housing with certain values which are uh, perhaps proving that housing is connected to life in common in general. For example, decent housing. Housing which is uh, based on the dignity of its users. Also, uh, just situations. Situations that provide a just housing for all and give to all the opportunity to express their own way of life. So, connecting the right to housing to specific values and reversing the imaginary of private ownership is one of the most important, I believe, things that have proven to be uh, on the agenda of urban social movements and one of the most important things that can also provide to people uh, the values and, uh, and the motives and uh, the pride to fight against the banks, to fight against those who appear to be as lawful owners of their houses because they had to, 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 uh, to, be, to enter the situation of debt, the situation of, of loans. So if we want to go beyond this <coughs> ownership trap, maybe you have to rethink about the right to housing in a new way. Perhaps beyond, and this has been proven also to my mind by the contribution of all the uh, people talking about from, from the standpoint of the movements, to go beyond the idea of housing as either private or public. Perhaps there is a condition in which we can think of housing in the prospect of commoning, that is, housing as a situation in which we can understand that it is a collective right to be expressed collectively, to be demanded, but also to be made as a concrete reality by those who want to support their lives. So to ask, to demand housing <coughs> may also mean to take empty houses, to create new conditions, new life forms, as some of the contributors have already said, to prove that housing is perhaps an experimental laboratory in this situation of crisis in which we can discover new forms of life in common. Because if we understand housing as a commons, as a form of commons, then we don't have simply to ask the state for its support. We will never stop this, but we will have at the same time to try to build our own formations, our own forms of creating housing, our own values that must uh, uh, support housing as a common collective experience. It is very interesting, I have noted for this uh, small uh, intervention, I, I needed to return to the definition of the right to the city by André Lefebvre. And I wanted to return to it because I know and you all know that he wasn't talking about a right to be added to all other rights. He was talking about the right of rights, perhaps. Or a right which can be a superior form of rights, as he says. And listen to what he says and how, how important and how, how uh, crucial it is for today's movement and considerations about the right to housing. He says it is a superior form of rights, right to freedom, and right to individualization in socialization. So this is a new way of understanding, not simply this right as a form of individual right, but not also simply as a form of right to be provided 
by a society through its through the society's institutions. It is a right which is basically connected to socialization procedures. It is a right which can, in a way, show us what kind of society it is. The way this right is expressed, the way this right is demanded, and the way this right is uh, gained by people fighting for, for their houses, proves what kind of societies these are. And in order, and this, this is my last, uh, uh, let's say, um, suggestion. This proves that the fighting, the struggles for the right to housing, immediately connects <coughs> to emancipatory struggles. Immediately, not because we are ideologists of a future society, not because we long for an emancipated society, but because struggles about housing immediately connect us with this beyond capitalism. Immediately clashes with the basic values and the basic mechanisms that create capitalism, that make capitalism be what it is. And just to uh, bring uh, into the discussion uh, an outside which might, which might prove not only an outside but perhaps a future uh, uh, projection of our situation. In Latin America, lots of people were thrown out of the society. Lots of people had to devise and reinvent the city in the peripheries. And we saw that this is happening already in Lisbon, uh, tomorrow in Athens, perhaps uh, the day after tomorrow in Madrid and Barcelona. We saw that shanty towns, which were something of the past in Europe, are reimagining. What is happening? Some people are thrown out of the society, and some people have to devise ways to survive. By devising these ways, they either reinvent the jungle, one against everybody, all against them, all, or they reinvent solidarity and new forms of collective understanding and, and uh, new forms of collective uh, appropriation of space in order to meet collective needs. To end my contribution, again, Lefebvre, the other half of the, of the, the previous uh, uh, phrase that I used, he says, the right to housing, the right to the ever, to the, to the work as a collective <coughs> practice work, as an invention, the right to participation and appropriation, which is clearly distinct from the right to property, eh? participation and appropriation, not property, are implied in the right to the city. And we are facing this kind of situation. In our struggle for the right to housing, we are facing the possibility, the opportunity, and the dream of another more just society. Thank you very much.